Hi, I'm Jane from Jane's Kitchen and welcome to my home kitchen. Today we are making a creamy prawn risotto with a homemade prawn stock. Today happens to be one of my favorite days in the kitchen because I am making a seafood recipe and seafood is my absolute favorite thing to eat of all time. And my little trick to making a great seafood recipe is to utilize every last part of the seafood. For our prawn risotto today, we're gonna to be using the heads and the shells from the prawns because a great risotto needs a really great stock to go with it. To get started, we're gonna make the stock because that needs at least one to two hours to cook away on the stove. I have these beautiful Queensland prawns that were from Ash Brothers Seafood. So as you can see, these are whole prawns that I'm using today and we do need whole prawns for this recipe because we're going to use the heads and the shell to make the stock. The first part is we're just going to rip the heads off. So you're just going to grab it like this and that's how easy that is. And we're going to do that to a kilo of these fresh prawns. And we're just going to toss the body of the prawn to the side for now. And when that stock is cooking away, I'm going to then peel the prawns because we've got plenty of time to prep for our risotto once we've got the stock on the stove. All right, so that is all our prawn heads detached from the body. Now you can use the shells from the body for the stock as well, but I'm just gonna use the heads today because I'm gonna peel these prawns when the stock's on the stove. So we don't need too many ingredients. We need two whole onions and we're actually gonna keep the skin on the onions because the skin actually creates a really beautiful color in this stock. I'm just gonna quarter them. And then I have two whole carrots. I'm just gonna roughly chop those. Again, no need to peel them. The skin has a lot of flavor. We wanna use every last part of the vegetable. And I have a fennel, and the reason I'm using fennel in this stock, as opposed to something more familiar like celery, is because I love these fennel fronds in my seafood risotto. This dish is the epitome of ugly delicious. It's not a very pretty dish to look at. The stock has a brownie orange color to it, so the risotto comes out looking a little bit brown, but once you add these beautiful green fennel fronds, it just brings it to life. So it is really important, and no part of this vegetable is going to waste. I'm just gonna set those to the side, and then the fennel is gonna go into my stock. And the last thing we need is a whole garlic that I'm just gonna cut in half, expose those cloves, and that's gonna be going into my stock as well. And then we need a few herbs like bay leaves and peppercorns, throw it all into a pot with water and leave that bubbling away for about an hour to two. Time to make our prawn stock. You need a hefty amount of olive oil at the bottom of your pan. And I'm using a heavy Dutch oven pan to make this stock. So heat that olive oil on a high heat. Ooh, listen to that beautiful sizzle. Now we're just gonna fry off these prawn heads until they turn a really deep red color. And if we weren't making a stock today, you could actually put a lot more olive oil in there and drain it off and you'd have a really lovely, delicious prawn oil, which you can drizzle over so many seafood dishes or anything that you wanna give that prawn flavor to. Now these prawns have turned a beautiful red color. Now, as I said, we wanna get every last drop of flavor out of those prawn heads. So, I've got a potato masher and I'm gonna go in and squeeze that flavor out. And now if you have if we had smell a vision, now's the time where you would really smell that intense prawn flavor. So just give that a little toss through again. And look at that color at the bottom. Just look at that. You can see how flavorsome that is. Now we're gonna throw the veggies in and just fry those off a little bit. So just fry that. Now we're gonna add our spices. So about a tablespoon of black peppercorns, if not a little bit more. A few bay leaves, about three or four. A big, big pinch of salt. And then we just wanna fill up the water so everything is covered. It's about eight cups of water that you need. Just give it all a stir. We're gonna bring it to the boil and then I'm gonna actually move it to a lower burner because I just want it on a really low simmer for about an hour to two. And we're gonna put a lid on it just so we don't lose too much of that stock. For the risotto, we need about six cups. So we've got nine cups in there for a bit of breathing room 
I will take the lid off eventually if it does need to just evaporate a little bit more. And that is how easy it is to make our stock. That is almost at the boil. And as you can see, there is this foam or impurities coming to the surface. And as the stock cooks, we're just gonna scoop those off and pop them to the side because we don't want that in our stock. We wanna keep it nice and clear and clean. So I'm gonna move it to the lower burner. I'm gonna bring it to a low simmer. And we're gonna leave that for one to two hours, however long you like. That prawn stock has been on the stove for just over two hours. We can smell it in the house. It smells so good. I'm gonna strain the stock through a fine mesh strainer. And you could be a little bit more fussy and line it with a cheesecloth or a chucks if you really wanna catch all those impurities or even do a double strain. But I'm just gonna do once because I'm not too fussy about it. Just be careful because it is hot. Oh, and look at that gorgeous color. It's that rich amber color. It smells so prawny, so good. It's gonna make the perfect base for our risotto. So I'm just gonna put it into another pot, keep it warm on the burner while I cook the risotto. And that's it. To peel a prawn, get your thumb and work it under the legs of the prawn and just pull it in an upward away motion from your body and repeat that as you work down the body of the prawn. Now this comes down to personal preference, but I like leaving the tail at the end of the tail part on, just because then when you're eating it in the risotto, you can hold your prawn up like a lollipop and bite straight into it. So now we're just gonna twist the prawn around as we take that shell off and set those shells to the side because I'm gonna put them in the freezer and use them in my next prawn stock. Now this part's important because the prawn has its vein or poo line that people like to call it in its spine and it is really yucky so it is important that we do remove it. So you can either get your finger in here and just pull it out with a bit of tension. There we go. Just like that, it's really easy and that prevents us from having to cut down the spine of the prawn and butterflying it open, which again just comes down to looks, but I prefer when we can keep it intact. We've peeled all our prawns and now we just need to cut up an onion, which I'm gonna finely dice. Oh, this onion's a bit green and I can tell that my eyes are going to water badly soon. <laughs> and then we're just gonna dice that up as my eyes go. <laughs> I am crying. We are back from our small onion tear break. I had to go clean myself up. <laughs> and then the last thing you wanna do for this risotto is just peel and slice up four garlic cloves. All right, and that's it for our prep work for the risotto. Now we're gonna go cook it over on the stove. I'm gonna cook the risotto in a large Dutch oven pot and I'm gonna start with a generous amount of olive oil about two to three tablespoons. Bring it up to a heat, and then let's fry off our onion. It almost killed me before, and our garlic. And once that's sizzling away, I just turn the heat all the way down and sweat those off for about three to four minutes until that onion is translucent and fragrant and that garlic has cooked through. And now we're gonna add in a cup and a half of arborio rice. And it's really important we're using this type of rice when making a risotto because this rice can absorb a lot of liquid. Now I'm just gonna measure out a cup and a half. I'm gonna pour that in. And now we're just gonna cook the rice and toast it until it's a little bit nutty. And just stir it through with all that olive oil, garlic and onion. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna measure out a cup of white wine. I'm actually using a Riesling today. It's quite light and crisp, which I think works perfectly with seafood. And now I'm going to add in the white wine, and this is our first absorption step. So when we're making a risotto, we're gonna get the rice to absorb the liquid in steps. This is number one, and then the stock is number two up to number six, or number seven, because we're doing six cups of stock. So let's pour that in. and we're gonna cook that wine until that rice has fully absorbed it all. So do this on a medium low heat. 
and you'll see while that's cooking, I've actually put that prawn stock on a low heat in a pot with a lid on because we want to keep it really warm for when we're cooking the risotto. So when that stock hits the rice, it's hot enough for it to begin to absorb and start boiling away. Now the funny thing with risotto is the first few steps of adding a liquid, it's actually quite quick to absorb. And then as you go further and further along and the rice begins to get more plump and it begins to absorb much more liquid, it's gonna be a little bit slower to absorb. Now, I don't measure out a cup at a time. I use a ladle, which is about three quarters of a cup. So I'm just gonna do one ladle and a bit each time. Oh, look at the color of that stock, it's quite special. Pop the lid back on. And this is what I meant earlier when I said this risotto can sort of be the epitome of ugly delicious because that stock is quite an amber color. Although I find it quite beautiful, especially with a bit of those green fennel fronds at the end. You do need to babysit a risotto quite a bit. You wanna keep stirring it as that liquid gets absorbed by the rice and it becomes nice and plump and juicy. It's not one of those dishes where you can walk away, go do the dishes do some folding of laundry or whatever you want to do, watch some TV, you kind of have to stay here by the stove. Now that is cup one of our stock. So you'll see that it's gotten thicker, the rice is starting to get plumper. When you put your spoon through it, you can't see any liquid in there. That means that we're ready for cup number two. And then just a little bit more and just keep stirring through. All right, that's cup number two that's been absorbed. And I've been here stirring it the whole time. Not consistently, but you know, every 10, 30 seconds I'm giving it a good stir. And you'll see that that second cup of stock has absorbed really nicely. So let's go in for number three. Make sure you always pop that lid back on. All right, that's cup number three of stock that's been absorbed. So we're ready to go on with number four. Oh, yum. Mm. <laughs> okay, that was cup number five. We're at the final stretch. This is cup number six, our final cup. And we do have to be a little bit careful when we're adding this cup in because we want to keep a close eye on it. Unlike these other five cups of stock, we only want to absorb about 80% of the liquid. And that's because we're going to add the prawns and the butter and the cheese in, and that's going to make that stock a little thicker. So we need a little bit of breathing room there. Now this one does have a bit of an art. I've been making risotto for years, yet I still get nervous when I get to stock number six. So we're gonna do it the exact same way as we did the five other ones, but I'm just gonna keep a little bit of a closer eye on it. And as I said, I'm only gonna get it to about 80% absorption. You don't want it too runny and you don't want it too thick. Now you might be wondering why there's just a tiny little bit of stock left in the pot. And I leave this as a plan B. So if I do have that rice absorb too much of the last cup of stock, I just add a little bit more of that in. Because if we go to like 100, even 90% absorption, your risotto is gonna be really gluggy and that's not what we're looking for. So that's my plan B stock, just in case we need it. All right, that is looking pretty good to me. There's still a bit of liquid in there for these prawns and the butter and the cheese to cook in. Now I'm gonna pop the prawns in. And these need a really short amount of time. I'd say about three minutes. The way when you know a prawn is cooked is when the flesh is no longer glassy and translucent, it's turned pink. If you're really worried about it as well, you can cut into one. So now to finish it off, I'm gonna put through the traditional mixture of cheese and butter into the risotto. I know it's blasphemy in Italian cooking to mix cheese with a seafood dish, but it's how I like to eat my risotto and I think it makes it extra, extra delicious and creamy. So I've got about 50 grams of butter just cut into small cubes that I'm gonna throw in there. And then about 30 grams of cheese, of Pecorino Romano to be exact. And then season with salt and pepper. And I'm actually gonna turn the heat off for this step. Let's stir that through. And this is where the magic of risotto happens. 
You'll see it's turning into a beautiful, silky, glossy, perfectly liquidy texture. That butter is making it creamy and so is that cheese. And this is all being done off the heat. We don't need any heat, any more heat, I should say, for this step. You just want the heat from that steam. And I'm really happy with where this texture's at. So I've taken that risotto off the heat and the final little thing we need to do is just give it a big squeeze of lemon. And then I'm gonna plate it up. Get all of those delicious prawns in there. Oh, and this just smells so good. And now just for that final touch, we kept those fennel frongs from the uh, stock. So I'm just gonna pick them off and scatter them over. So we do need a bit of green and see how that just lifts the dish so much aesthetically. Can do a final bit of cheese for those cheese lovers out there. And just a little crack of freshly cracked pepper. And there you have it, the perfect bowl of creamy prawn risotto made with that homemade prawn stock, which isn't too difficult to do it at all. And now for the moment I've been waiting for, because this has just made my house smell so good all day, is that taste test. Mm. Yum. That lemon at the end just lifts it so much and it's got that perfectly creamy, buttery, cheesy, silky texture. And as I said, I'm gonna get my prawn and I'm gonna eat it like a lollipop. <laughs> Yum. If you make this recipe at home, please tag me. I'd love to see your home creations of this creamy prawn risotto and like and subscribe for more recipes like this.